Hi everyone, I'll be talking about CRISPR for the next five minutes. So you may be wondering, I've heard about CRISPR before. These are molecular scissors. They're guided by a magic molecule called RNA. And they can do genome editing. And I've heard, also heard that the uh, pioneers in this field have won the Nobel Prize. And indeed, they won the Nobel Prize uh, in 2020. And these are two women scientists um, Jennifer Dautner and Emmanuel Charpentier. So all these answers are great, and if you're in my class, you would have gotten full points. And so you would got bo bonus point if you further point out that uh, CRISPR is an RNA-guided immunity system uh, used by bacteria to fight off viruses and mobile genetic elements. And so they cut and paste short piece of DNA into the CRISPR array to establish a molecular memory. And there are d various different kind of CRISPR systems, and they do the following steps slightly differently. So in my favorite system, which is called CRISPR-Cas3, um, many proteins assemble with the guide RNA to form a complex called cascade. And so the job is to use the RNA guide to find the matching DNA target. And this is done by unzipping the DNA into two strands and then promote the formation of heteroduplex between the DNA and the RNA strand. So afterwards, the, uh, my favorite molecule, Cas3 enzyme, is recruited by Cascade. And so uh, this is a really powerful nucleus. And so upon recruitment, it's going to nick the DNA and further travel along the DNA and shred the DNA into pieces along its path. So as you can see, there are many moving parts. And it's a very, very sophisticated system. And so I just felt, um, I felt fascinated by the system because it gave me a feeling that this is almost like my childhood clock. So my lab spent many years uh, basically trying to provide a molecular dissection of the system. We inspected the system uh, at nanoscale and, and generated many publications. And so what's different between the fate of my childhood clock and the Cas3 system is that after the inspection, I was actually able to successfully put it back into one piece and put it into the human cells and demonstrate that we can use it for genome editing. Um, so kilobases of DNA can be deleted from a human genome in an RNA-guided fashion. The experimental outcome agrees with our experiment, uh, mechanism model quite well. And this is always a good thing when experiments agree with the model, that means we're on the right track. So um, our conclusion in the first half of the work is that CRISPR-Cas3 is a high efficiency, high fidelity deletion editing tool. And so then in the next phase of study, we really wish to bring its therapeutic power. And we have a few ideas in testing. One idea is about applying CRISPR-Cas3 for antiviral applications. So most viruses, when infecting us, only give uh, temporal, temporary, uh, temporal, temporal discomfort, right? So, um, but some viruses will persist, and so they cause lifelong infections. And this is because they either circularize their genome to become more stable, or worse yet, they integrate into our genome and become part of our own DNA. So none of these cases are welcome. And um, in fact, HIV used the second scheme, and it, it's extremely hard to eradicate HIV uh, genomes um, uh, to completely cure the HIV patients. So what we want is a uh, molecular sentinel that can detect the hidden viral genome and delete them from our DNA. And so our idea is to program Cas3 uh, and send those Cas3 pacments to degrade the circular RNA uh, viral genome into pieces, and for integrated DNA, we can program two of those Pacmans in a head-to-head -head fashion to delete the viral DNA from our DNA. Another thought is to apply CRISPR-Cas3 for anti-cancer applications. So cancer is the result of spontaneous mutation in our own cells. And so in many cases, the driver event has been well-defined. For example, a reciprocal translocation of chromosome arms has been shown to cause cancer in many cases. And this is because 
uh, this event lead to very predictable gene fusion event, and the product of that gene fusion uh, essentially gave the mutant cells unfair growth advantage, and they became cancer. So one way to cure those cancer is basically to program the CRISPR-Cas3 Pac-Man uh, specifically against the breakpoint sequence and send off the Cas3 uh, Cas to inactivate the fusion gene, and that will for sure halt the growth of the cancer cells. So as you can see, we have came a long way from mechanistic understanding to the therapeutic usage of Cas3, um, and we hope that we'll mature the tool and bring it to fruition, and we hope that this will benefit the greater mankind.